This presentation is going to be given by Fanor Montoya Maya from Corrales de Paz, and he's going to talk about restoring the coral reefs of tomorrow. So take it away, Fanor. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, so today, the idea is to present seven ways that I believe we should tackle if we are to restore the coral reefs of tomorrow. As we know today, about 20% of our original coral reef area is lost. 75% is a critical state, and actually only 5% of what we have left seems healthy. But everywhere I go, and I'm lucky to travel a little bit, I see some positive evidence that things might not be as bad as we think. For instance, I see good recovery from large-scale massive bleaching in the Maldives. I see reefs in very polluted areas showing about 80% coral cover. And also, I find that interventions can have a positive result in very short short periods of time if we do it properly. And so this is what I've seen in the last three or four years, if not more. But then I need to find ways to support these seven ways of restoring the coral reefs of tomorrow. And to do that, I went back and I checked the geological record of coral reefs. And it showed us that at least there has been five massive extinctions of process of reef development throughout the eco uh, geological record. This was really promising because as I read, every time they come back stronger and more diverse. So I'm actually today not worried about coral reefs. I'm actually worried about the people who depend on coral reefs. Coral reefs will continue providing goods and services. They will definitely change as we know them today. But what we need to do is to ensure that about 1 billion people who depend on coral reefs for food, for uh, coastal protection, for recreation, they can continue enjoying those goods and services. So with that in mind, I have proposed seven ways to restore the reefs of tomorrow. Very easy ways that, I, that we already have evidence that they work, but if we combine them, I think we can succeed and reach our goal of having functional reefs in the near future. The first step, a way that I would recommend, and the most important one, and the one that has to be done before you even actually consider any other kind of intervention, is to control or reduce the th threats that cause coral degradation. And there is evidence already that when you protect a coral reef, it increases the coral cover and the fish density as well. Examples abound in the literature. I recommend you to go and look for, for those, but there are examples in remote areas in, and in very populated areas that marine protected areas, when you compare them to unprotected areas, the MPAs provide a good environment for natural recovery. It just takes a little bit longer, so we need to take that into account. So if we want to accelerate now, let's and think about the reefs of tomorrow, let's move into the second way that I propose, and is to propagate those survivors. In any other reef that you go, you're gonna find those who succumb to coral bleaching or to high pollution or to um, sedimentation, but there are some that will definitely be stronger and will survive and come back after those stressors are gone. Those are the ones that we need to be propagating. We did that in the Seychelles, in the Reef Rescuers uh, project. And we found that when you compare the healthy control site that we have, that reference site, to the transplanted site, where we have transplanted more than 25,000 uh, uh, survival corals from previous bleaching events, we found that the transplanted site took longer to bleach 
and they took longer to die as well. They ended up dying as well than the reference site, but they did so in a, in a less percentage and it took longer. So it definitely provides some natural resistance if we propagate those co survival, surviving corals. The third way that I should suggest now is, as you already are using coral nurseries for sure, okay, why don't you have a bigger purpose for those nurseries than just a holding a few corals? Why don't you turn them into species or genetic repositories or even reproductive hubs? Why do I mean that? Why don't we use those coral nurseries as like the Noah's Ark when we have different species and within each species we, we have different genotypes that provide some um, um, brew stock from when things get really, really difficult. And you can do that with small nurseries when you have those corals that are surviving and you have that brood stock in that, those good conditions that will provide you uh, enough material to go and restore when you have to. Or you can use as well moving nurseries that then you can transfer to a reef that you want to restore or rehabilitate with sexually propagated corals. They can become a reproductive hub, those nurseries, because you can have them long enough so that they can be mature in those nurseries. And then when you take them to that reef at the time of spawning, that release of gametes will certainly help in propagating new corals to that reef. The fourth way that I would recommend you to think about is to increase the density of fast growing corals. And to explain that one, I think I have to refer to the chicken or the egg problem here. What came first? The massive corals or the fast growing branching corals? And to answer that question, I have, again, I have looked at the different places that I have visited. And if I go to Sandy Bottoms, for instance, in the Maldives, I just find lots and lots of branching corals thriving in those conditions. When I look to uh, recently developed hard substrate, like a two-year-old volcanic island in Tonga, the first thing I see is fast growing branching corals. If you look at artificial substrates, you will also find the same. You find fast growing branching corals being the first ones to colonize those substrates. And that to me explains a lot of why we see natural recovery thanks to the colonization of these fast growing branching corals. And is that they provide a structural complexity to that reef. And there is lots of uh, literature as well that supports the fact that a structural complexity increases the likelihood of natural recovery. It helps to increase coral cover, it helps to increase biomass for fish, and it also helps to decrease algal cover. So adding a structural complexity by transplanting fast-growing branching corals definitely helps or accelerates the natural recovery of the reef. The fifth way that I promote is to increase the scale and diversity of interventions. We can do the previous four at a smaller scale. Yes, it could help, but the problem that we're facing is really, really big. So we need to increase the scale at a size that is similar to that of the problem. And we did that in the Seychelles as well, where we find a degraded reef with only 3% coral cover. We transplant on that reef 25,000 corals in the area of the size of a football pitch at a density that is three to five corals per square meter. That was a massive effort, but in just a period of two years, we found a significant increase in coral cover 
and also a significant increase in natural recovery measure as coral recruitment and coral settlement. Also, when you increase the scale, regardless of what intervention you use, you also accelerate natural recovery. An example that you can find for an artificial structure used for coral restoration is in Indonesia, where they use some frames to add corals in an area that was destroyed by blast fishing. It's about seven hectares of reef that has been rehabilitated using these structures. And the results are evident and they show a clear increase in coral cover and fish density as well. So if you definitely increase the scale regardless of what method you use, you're gonna be also in speeding up natural recovery. What if you combine and complement the techniques that are available? So do not marry with only one technique. Try to combine and complement with other ones that are available. For instance, you can use microfragmentation plus coral gardening so that you can add massive corals as well to your restoration efforts. If you add sexual propagation too, then you can increase the genetic diversity, which is very important. And with time, you can also ask for help from the natural um, gardeners, like the crabs and the fish as well. So if you combine all of those, you're in the good track for speeding up natural recovery. And now what if you combine those restore areas or rehabilitated areas in a maze or in a network. You're definitely, definitely gonna be using connectivity as a proxy for ensuring that untouched areas or areas that you cannot, in, you cannot intervene will still benefit from your restoration efforts. So imagine like you have different locations that you intervene with any of those techniques that I mentioned before, following any of those recommendations that I gave you before, but then you ensure that by oceanography or by location, you can connect, intervene with unintervened reefs as well. Then you're gonna be spreading the benefits of interventions to other reefs as well. The last one, and it's to me, one of the requirements for actually engaging in any coral restoration project is that it, you need to involve and engage reef users. Why are we doing this of restoring coral reefs? It is not to assist people's livelihoods. So we need to engage them because in so doing, we can ensure that they will commit to control, they will commit to reduce impacts and also they will commit to sustain conservation and restoration actions in the long run. So to finish, and the take home message is that here you can find seven ways to restore the reefs of tomorrow. First, control and reduce the threats to coral reefs. Propagate the survivors build and use nurseries as a species genetic repositories or even reproductive hubs. Increase the density of fast growing corals so you can provide those chemical cues for other corals to be attracted. Increase the scale and the diversity of interventions. Then connect those rehabilitated areas and ensure that the reef users who will benefit and assist you in the process are engaged from the beginning. That way, I'm sure we can restore the reefs of tomorrow. Thank you.